guys, welcome back to Fly Chick TV. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the post notification bell to get all the notifications when I post. Hope you guys are doing well. I know you guys haven't seen me in a little minute. Been super busy, but I was like, I have to film for you guys. I can't just be busy. That's not an excuse. You have to make time for what you love. And I love being a YouTuber. So I'm going to get right into this video. But before we do that, shout out to all my new subscribers and everyone who's sharing and posting my content. I greatly appreciate it. You can find updates on my Instagram, Cafe Bay. And I'm going to put it in the link. And I'm going to actually put a text so you guys can see. Follow me on Instagram, Faye Babe, TikTok. Um, what is my TikTok? My TikTok is. <laughs> my tiktok is the real fly chick fay go ahead and follow me on tiktok i post little content videos updates on my channel also you can follow me on instagram which is a bit closer fay bay this is my instagram y'all so go ahead and follow me on that don't forget to like comment subscribe so today's topic is going to be a little heavy a little deep but also bringing awareness to mental health so we're going to get right into it Today we are going to be talking about five to ten tips on how to deal with depression anxiety and stress I do have my notes put together because I wasn't gonna come on here and just ramble about every just ramble so we are going to be talking about depression and we're going to be talking about how to manage stress because I realized it be stressful out here so we be stressing and we need to learn how to manage our stress without going overboard Trust me, I know how stress can be. What stress feels like, I know how anxiety is, I know how depression is. It's It can be a little scary, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna help y'all out. I'm gonna give y'all a couple tips how to manage your depression, seasonal depression or regular depression, whichever category you fall in. Some of the things that I do to keep me calm and just relax. Don't get me wrong. Anxiety, stress, and depression can be a crazy. Like if you can't handle it, you can't handle it, but there's ways to cope and ways to manage your stress so first point is we're going to start with the stress and i'm going to give you all five key things on what stress is and how to maintain your stress i might add a little bit more so this video might be a little lengthy but this is all good and aware good awareness and good information so what is stress stress can be defined as any type of change that causes physical, emotional, or psychological strain. Stress is your, is your body's response to anything that requires attention or action. Everyone experiences stress in some degree. The way you respond to stress, however, makes a big difference on your overall well-being. So basically stress can be like, say you have a deadline at work, you gotta watch the kids, you gotta put them at bed at nine, you have to kind of learn how to manage that stress without giving too much stress attention because for instance for me like i'm in school right now and i am currently trying to do time management with filming and going to not really going to school but going to internship so i have days where i can film and then days where i can't just film anything so managing your time is number one number two writing down what you need to get done will help relieve stress and don't give yourself a time limit i know life can get so stressful that you feel like you have to do everything at once but just relax do one thing at a time um some of the things that i wrote down was plan your day with an outline of your most important tasks like i said write your things down like even if you got to write it in your phone write it in your phone set a reminder on iphone you can do set reminder and it'll kind of give you like a little place where you can add your reminders on your phone so that's one way to keep your stress level down work at a steady pace like you don't have to rush like me i'm still learning how to be a little patient and not rush but work at a steady pace first thing in the morning this is one thing that i'm learning to do and i hope you guys will get this out of this video uh, first thing to do is speak your words of affirmations, which can be, I'm going to have a good day. 
I will have a peaceful day. I'm going to be at peace however my day goes. This is key right here. I'm going to be at peace however my day goes. And I am worthy of a stress-free life. It doesn't even, you don't have to say it out loud. You don't have to say it for somebody to hear you. You can literally stand in your mirror and just be like, I will have a good day today. Any stress that I go through, I will handle it and manage it in the most calmest way that I possibly can. That will really help you. The more you speak that into your day, the easier your day will get. And also saying a quick prayer before you go out of your house is also important if you are a Christian or if you, whoever you pray to, you just ask God, your higher power or God um, to give you a good day. Me, I'm a Christian, so I believe in God. Definitely would recommend jazz. Music will calm you down. So if you play that in the background while you have a meeting or you know, you're writing down some documentation at work or you just, you need to calm down, play some jazz music. It really is therapeutic. And honestly, the best thing with stress, don't overwork yourself. If you start to feel stressed, take small breaths like this and just watch your breathing. Cause if you notice like when you're stressed, you're like high up, like your blood pressure high, you're high up in like stress, just, and then you can count backwards like 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, all the way to one. That will also calm you down. Let's get into anxiety. Five tips to manage anxiety. What is anxiety actually? Let's talk about that. It's an intense, excessive, persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. Fast heart rate, rapid breathing, sweating and feeling tired may occur. Also heart palpitations where your heart just flutters. That is also a sign of anxiety. Common signs of anxiety and symptoms can be feeling nervous, restless, tense, having danger or panic or doom, like you just have a sense of fear, panic, um, having an increased heart rate, the heart palpitations, breathing rapidly, sweating, trembling, like it's just a lot, like you're just overly, you're overwhelmed. Trouble concentrating or thinking about anything other than the present worry. When you feel like your anxiety is high, first count down to 20 backwards, just like I said in the last part about stress, you can count to 20 backwards in your head and watch your breathing breathing in and out and relaxing your body and slowly slowing down your thoughts because your mind can be racing when you have anxiety. If you're working on a project or something for work or you feel overwhelmed, take a few minutes and a few moments, like two to five minutes to reconnect with yourself or some place that makes you feel relaxed. Just put that in your mind and it'll slowly calm you down. Um, but just try to reconnect yourself and that's so take a moment for yourself two to five minutes it can be drawing on a piece of paper writing down your thoughts to get yourself to calm down it's also a good thing to do um and then i actually learned a technique you're back you're gonna take your right arm and place it right here you're gonna take your left arm and place it right here and then you're just gonna kind of tap like wait let me show you how to tap so one So that is very peaceful, like I just did it and I just relaxed completely. That's a therapeutic thing that I learned in therapy. And therapy is not bad, you guys. I'm actually going to talk about that in the next segment, which is about depression. So we're going to get into all that. The tapping method is very important. Like if you can do that without, with through your day, it will help. Um, and then you will also form a rhythm. Like I was tapping on my shoulder, I was going one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and you would just not count it, but you would just tap. Cool activities that you can do are a healthy diet, regular sleep, seven to eight hours of sleep is very important to you. Sleep is the, mo the most number one important thing for your well-being and your body and your health. Relaxation activities. To manage your symptoms effectively, it's to, the best thing to do is avoid caffeine alcohol and nicotine so if you are a smoker try to cut down on your smoking if you drink alcohol try to cut down on alcohol because that also can bring anxiety and if you didn't know alcohol is an antidepressant so the more you drink it the more you are liable to 
being dependent on alcohol to be okay and that becomes alcoholism so that's just a tip when it comes to anxiety honestly like talking to somebody you trust about what's going on in your life or you can seek therapy which is my favorite because it's unbiased and you can get all your thoughts out and get a different perspective on how to deal with issues in a positive light definitely good to have a therapist you don't have no judgment at your therapy sessions you can speak freely and the thing with them is like they find healthy objectives instead of you you know maybe you have a friend or a family member who's giving you advice but it's not positive it's better to see a professional who will give you a different look on things and a healthy way to help you resolve your issues and your anxiety and help you cope with your anxiety so let's get into depression what is depression depression is a mood disorder that causes persistent feelings of sadness and loss of interest also called major depressive disorder or a clinical depression it affects how you think how you behave and can lead to very various emotional and physical problems i'm gonna give you all my testimony at the end of this video i want to talk about the main points before i get into my own reason why i even shared this video to begin with um but yes so the physical and emotional problems can be caused with depression some of the symptoms someone with depression or if you are dealing with depression if any of these signs check off for you i would definitely advise you to see if you can speak with the mental health service so that they can um you know help you kind of cope and understand what depression is and what it comes with basically um some of the things people may experience in their moods are anxiety empathy general discontent guilt hopelessness loss of interest in goals ambitions or pleasure in activities mood swings sadness sleep can also vary early waking like waking up super early excessive sleeping like sleeping your whole day away insomnia not sleeping restless sleep tossing and turning um, whole body can be excess hunger fatigue loss of appetite restlessness and behavioral can be excessive crying irritability and social isolation the cognitive which is the brain lack of concentration or slowness in, or slowness in activity weight gain or weight loss so a lot of people i've realized everybody is different some people can be depressed and gain weight some people can be depressed and stressed and lose weight and then some people can actually gain weight because they are stressed so it's different like everybody is literally different so and also what is common is a poor appetite repeatedly repeatedly going over thoughts and thoughts of suicide which is a big thing in depression is suicidal thoughts before anything before any of this these tips before i get into this depression thing i just want to say if, if you know anyone or you're someone experiencing extreme lows and highs talk to someone like your doctor or someone you can trust about how you can manage your lows and getting help you need you are not alone like there's a lot of people who deal with these mental health challenges mental stresses a thousand times more than what we think people might not look like it on instagram might not look like it in real life but people are really going through a lot of things and it is okay to get help like seriously it really is services online where you can literally meet a therapist once a week and talk to somebody about your problems and it's confidential a lot of people are like no therapy is not confidential but it is they are not basic when it comes to depression and mental health illness the first step is to embrace yourself and still love the person that you are. And from my own experience, like dealing with depression for however long that I've dealt with and other things, like it was very hard to accept the fact that like I'm always getting sad sometimes. I don't want to get out of bed. Like there were times where I just sit in bed all day and did not want to go nowhere. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to party. I was just in my bed crying all day. So honestly, it is okay to love yourself. Like I had to learn that this is just a part of life and you just gotta roll with the punches like it might be hard but don't give up on yourself because you don't know what your future is gonna be like pain is temporary like at some point you will heal from this situation okay um managing depression can be a long road but the first step is to reach out to your doctor 
or find a community center for mental health. Taking the first step is making an appointment for intake and treatment. You can go with a family friend, you can go with a, like someone you feel comfortable going into the mental health clinic with. That thing can be scary, let me tell you. Like for me, when I first had my issues and I had to do that, it was very scary for me. But because my mom was always like, always there, it was, it, I was okay, you know? Like I had somebody with me. So if you need somebody to take you to your appointments because you're not feeling comfortable, by all means do that. Like there's so many resources in your area, you just have to Google it or talk to your insurance. Like if you have insurance, definitely call them, tell them you're having issues with depression and you're feeling sad and they will direct you in the right, they will put you in the right direction. To medication, me personally, if I knew what I knew now, I wouldn't have started medication. I think I would have found natural remedies like lavender, oils, meditation, really meditated on the word of God, um, which I, I'm learning to do now, working on it. Uh, meditating, listening to gospel music, listening to uplifting, encouraging music. Also listening to like um, self-help books about, you know, depression and stuff and learning how to you know, overcome it without having to take a prescription. Cause sometimes these medications that they give us, sometimes they don't work for you. So you have to find alternatives, but if you have to take medication, just make sure you take what works for you. And if you feel like the medication they're giving you is not working, do not hesitate to tell them like, hey, I do not like what y'all giving me. Can I try something else? So do your research, talk to your doctor, talk to your provider, and make sure you're ready to take medication first. It sounds really annoying to have to wake up every day or take a medication at night, but I'm telling you, if you are consistent with your medication, it will take you a long way. When you start to take it, stop, take it, stop, you're gonna go in cycles where you're just going behind and behind and behind, and your life is literally just gonna keep pushing back years and years. Like, you have to be persistent. If you want to win this depression, if you want to win any type of mental health issue, take your medication because it is really important. To each his own, if you like a, a antidepressant and you feel like it's working for you, go ahead. But for me personally, I'm not doing it. Um, the biggest thing with depression is getting therapy. Like therapy can be scary because you're like, they don't know me. Like, why would I go and tell my business to somebody who don't know me? Like, that's just weird. But it's for your own good. Like, it's not, they don't be asking you questions like do you why do you like they're gonna ask you relevant questions and they're gonna make your environment safe therapy is a safe place to express your thoughts and emotions without judgment set goals and milestones that you want to overcome working out in the weather whether it be taking a walk taking a stroll walking up your steps five minutes that's gonna help your brain like honestly the thing with mental health is you need to exercise, you need to be active, you need to be proactive because if you're not doing anything pr productive, you're going to be in that same mood every single day. And that's where we need to work on it. Um, running, swimming, listening to music, painting, taking a warm bath or a bubble bath or a shower. You can take a shower twice a day when you wake up to go to work or wherever you're gonna go, or even if you're home, take a shower. Just relax in the shower, let the hot water run on you and just calm your brain, calm your mind. When you get home from work or you get home from practice, you know, take you a bubble bath and just relax, unwind, listen to some jazz music. These are all coping ways to, you know, deal with depression and get into a better state of mind. Um, painting also helps or drawing on a piece of paper like I mentioned earlier. If you are, if you or anyone is dealing with depression or anxiety or having any mental health crisis, 273 talk and I'm going to put that in my description. If you are having any suicidal thoughts and you need someone to talk to, you can call 800-273-TALK-8255 any time of the day or night and online chat is also available. That is very important. 